Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Lumi Lewis, and today I have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show, Petya Kolibova. She is a woman, she is a woman's transformation coach who helped women who have been pushed down and been playing it small due to toxic relationships uh, or unhealed childhood traumas and help them create a life that is true to them and their sole purpose. Um, Kat, uh, Petya's mission is to help women who are on the path of healing from past wounds move through their limiting beliefs. Here's that word again, limiting beliefs and internal blocks so they can finally do what they want to do, what feels good to them and serve other women in a powerful way and do it online. Petya, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I love it. I love the introduction. Thank you so much. Such a beautiful flow. It is my pleasure. I'm excited because I am about morning routines, but it's about habits. And with, to instill habits, we have to somehow eradicate those limiting beliefs that's stopping us from sticking to our habits, stopping us from actually getting to our full potential. So you do this for women every day. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how led you, what led you to this path? <laughs> Thank you. Such a beautiful question, you know, and it's fascinating because if I would believe in accidents, I would say that I'm on this path just by chance, right? But I truly believe that everything in our life, it's happening for us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people look at me today, I'm, you know, know, successful podcaster and six figure earner. And I have a TV show in Las Vegas and everything looks like it's just picture perfect, right? Like yeah. being in love with the men of my dreams and, it hasn't been always this way because I was living through the darkness and my limiting beliefs. I wasn't allowing myself and I was just settling for whatever the life would bring me. I didn't believe that I'm worthy. I didn't believe that I'm deserving. And with that, I was going through a lot of pain. My mm -hmm. stepfather was physically, mentally abusive. I was going through depression, anxiety, and all these things that caused the darkness on my path and it wasn't up until I truly realized that if I want my life to change I have to change when things really started to shift and I absolutely love your show because I truly believe that it's all about creating the routines that are working for us and habits that are fulfilling and really knowing who we truly are versus just adapting what everybody else is doing right we get to be really self-aware and know who we want to be and then do things from that place. That's because how beliefs, we're... our beliefs were adapted from, from parents, from school, from teachers, from um, society. Somebody said we couldn't do this. Somebody said no to us. And then that stuck with us all our life. So yeah, <laughs> tell us how, you know, how you go about making that shift you know? Absolutely. And I, I, I believe that it really starts with knowing yourself. That's the most important thing. Like, who am I really? If you in your life, you got to see why you have been doing the things you have been doing up until now. So self-awareness, it's really the most important thing to start you on your journey. Because as you mentioned, very often, everything that we are living right now, it's based on our parents and grandparents and our limiting beliefs that we adapted from them because very often they were living in a survivor and we don't have to yet. Mm -hmm. It's still in our DNA. It's still in our blood. We think that we cannot do certain things, that we cannot say certain things and we're really dimming our light. So it really started with who am I really? Who do I want to be in this world and start creating changes from that space? Because very often we're doing million things at the same time. We keep ourselves so busy and we come to the end of the day and we are like, why am I feeling tired and frustrated and unfulfilled? Right. It's because you are doing things first 
versus first being, first checking with yourself, check in with yourself first, it's going to show you and tell you what things you get to be doing that will make the biggest difference. So it really started with realizing we are human doings. Right. We're not human, like, you We're know, human beings. beings. We are human beings, not human yeah. doings, yeah. because that's what we adopt. This, I got to work hard. I got to deserve things. I got to feel worthy by doing everything for everyone. And it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't fulfill us anymore. So it's rewriting those old limiting beliefs by knowing who you truly are and why you came here. What were some of yours? My, a big one for me was I am not enough. What was some of yours? Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Yes. It was not, not feeling really enough, you know, and, and that was like in general, because like I mentioned, I was, you know, with, with the parents that I grown up, my mom, she did everything that she could with what she knew. Right. But I really felt that if I would be lovable, I wouldn't be getting beaten up. If I would be lovable, I would, you know, get more attention and more love and my parents would be more present. So I was thinking that something is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that I don't matter and I shouldn't be here because um, I was an accident, right? Mm -hmm. My mom, she was dating my uh, biological dad for two years. Then they had a first encounter. She got pregnant and planned, never thought about abortion or, you know, taking away a baby. But I, for most of my life, it really took me three decades to realize this. I thought that I shouldn't be here, mm -hmm. that I'm unworthy. Right. So it's like, I am not enough because if I would be, I would be taken care of. I would be protected. I would be loved. And I took it with, you know, with me, even in my adulthood into my toxic relationship, because I was settling on relation. I didn't want to be alone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that does um, happen. And I really feel that very often women do this. Mm hmm so um, how do you help women overcome this? The the first step is, I, I, you know, I take them through the process of first we get to go back into the past. We really get to go back and see what did we put under the rug? What did we didn't want to face? Because sometimes my clients come to me and they're like, well, I don't remember much from my childhood. Well, there is a reason why you don't, because there might be things that you don't want to be seeing. So first step it's really go back to the past mm -hmm. healing and shedding a light on the past on the things that you might be like well I already forgave my parents okay so why keep attracting men who are the same like your father right if you heal that so first we heal the past then we step into the present moment who am I being right here right now what are my core values what do I stand for what do I want more of in my life so it's really shaping into the woman who you are being right now who do you want to really be and when we do that when we heal the past when you realize who you really are unapologetically with no apologies yeah. that's when we can really plan for the future that's when you can set the goals attract the love of your life bring in the opportunities build your business create beautiful relationship with money money mindset it's something that i work with women too because they feel unworthy and undeserving so they're undercharging and they're settling for much less than they should so it's like this beautiful walk throughout your life with me one-on-one -on -one coaching it's past present and future because very often women come to me and they're like i want more money i want to change a career i want to change my health I want to attract the men of my dreams or my partner of my dreams, but they don't heal the past. So they will be attracting this energetically, the same things, different places, different faces, the same thing. It's a so, cycle that never ends because exactly. you're not truly healed. It's very similar to the work that I do because you have to go back and identify those beliefs so that you can actually reframe it. We program it, identify what the meaning is that you've given to it, and then you can start reprogramming and instilling new beliefs. And you tie yours beautifully to abundant, right? So tell us a little bit about apolog unapologetically abundant and how you work with money mindset with the women you do. 
Absolutely. And I love that question because, you know, along my journey, I realized that even when I started to do the inner work and the journey, I was still thinking I have to be working hard. I have to like deserve the money. And I was like, you know, major imposter syndrome. Do I know enough? Can I really prove like, can I do the return on investment for my clients when they invest in working with me? So many questions. And it was because I never had the relationship with the money. I would make money because I would be working really hard and then I would spend it really quick. Yeah, I would spend it because I would feel undeserving of having it. And so I would give my money away. I would, you know, pay everything for my ex-boyfriend and give it to my friends and my family. And it was from place of fear. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't giving from place of love. So you really get to check in with yourself. Am I giving from place of fear or love? Is this abundance feeling or is it scarcity? And when you check in with yourself, your intuition, your heart, is going to give you the answer because no one else outside of you can give you the answer. I don't give the answer to my clients. I give them reflection questions. I guide them back to themselves. You get to go back to yourself and you do the same with your clients. You don't tell them like, oh, it's this way and you have to go this way. No, you help them reframe. You help them shift their mindset so they can discover and understand the answers there within. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's well put because you're empowering them to tap into the uh, the universe that is already inside them and supporting them a thousand percent. That's already um, living innate, and that's um, quite beautiful. Yeah, so uh, tell us briefly about your morning routine, right? Because to fester that environment, that energy, that culture, they're all practical steps. There are strategic methods that you have to do and you do it for yourself and you teach your clients, I'm pretty sure. So tell us, how do you get up, dress up and show up? What's your morning routine like? I love that question because like I can't exist without my morning routine. I'm doing it for so (laughs) many years and my morning routine, it's really a space of a flow and flexibility because What happens is I used to have very strict morning routine. I'm doing this for 15 minutes and this for 15 minutes. I'm journaling, I'm writing, I am writing my affirmations. I'm pulling my cards. I'm, you know, like doing Palo Santo. It was very strict. And sometimes I felt uninspired. It started to feel like one more thing to do. So now when I wake up in the morning, the first thing that I always, always, always do It's I put one hand on my heart, one on my belly, because that helps me connect with my breath, my body. I'm being present. I'm awakening to the day. And I say the things that I'm appreciating. I'm appreciating my bed. I'm appreciating my fiance. I'm appreciating my dog, like anything that I'm appreciating. And when I do this, then I ask myself, what am I really excited for today? Mm -hmm. Because it's so easy to wake up and have never ending to do list in your head. But I ask myself, what am I really, really excited for today? And I come up with one thing, maybe it's um, right now I am in Europe taking care of my grandma. So maybe it's spending day with my grandma or playing cards with her, like really being present. Maybe it's to have a call with my mentor, something that really fuels me and fulfills me. So when I'm getting out of the bed, I'm feeling already inspired for the day. So that is what I do every single day. And then after that, I check in with myself. What do I feel like today? Do I want to read? Do I want to journal? Do I want to meditate? Do I want to stretch? Do I want to work out? What is that I really want to do? And I follow that. So that's the flexible part of my morning routine. And then I always do 32 ounces of warm lemon water. 30 minutes later, I do 32 ounces of fresh um, squeezed um, celery juice. Mm -hmm. And then I do my heavy metal detox smoothie. So those are my non-negotiables the feeling into my body, appreciation, checking in what I'm excited for. Then there is a flow, whatever comes up for me. And the next one, again, no matter where I am in the world, I do my celery, I do my water, I do my smoothie or something that it's like healing and natural because I want to honor my body. I want to honor my energy. So that is really non-negotiable for me in the morning routine. And there is no technology. Yeah, I, I, I love the non-negotiables. There are things you just will not um, say, t- uh, allow anyone to 
take away from you because it's you taking care of yourself. It's your you time. And it's really a, a, a guard, right? A, a armor that you put around yourself every day because you're ready for whatever the day is going to throw at you. So dive into it a little bit about what happens if you negotiate those terms. Oh, you don't want to see me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't because I feel like... Um, when I don't do that, I, I was doing it very often in the past, you know, that I wake up, I grab my phone, I look at what is my team doing, I look at the messages from my clients, and those days, I feel rushed, I feel uncentered, I feel um, like out of space, I feel like I, I don't know what to do first, and I yeah. feel frustrated, like, it's just... I don't do that. And even if my morning routine is just five minutes, five minutes, it's better than nothing. Right. No technology, checking with myself. Because if I do that, I respond to the world and I'm feeling worthy and I'm feeling in the flow versus if I wouldn't do my routine, I don't even dare not to do it. But if I wouldn't do it, I know I'm frustrated, I'm short temper, and it doesn't have to be a rule. It's not like, oh, I'm a monster when I don't do my morning routine, but I can feel the difference inside of me. There is a less peace and there is less patience. Yeah, it's almost like you do it to for the benefits of those around you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, they like me better. <laughs> Uh, and it, and it, it, it must be done because again, you're, you're putting yourself first, but we sometimes we seldom just forget about the little things that makes an impact, such a drastic difference. It's five minutes. As you say, you're being graceful. You're with, you're listening to yourself. You're very in tune and connected. You're saying, if I just get five minutes, then it's better than nothing. So just on this, I love how you simplify that, right? Cause I have an app with nine actionable items that you can do nine minutes a day. What you do in the first 10 minutes, set the tone for the rest of it. I very, very truly um, believe that. So I, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that because it really puts it in perspective to be successful, to be thriving like you are doing. You have to do these little things in the morning. And Absolutely. Then, and it's fascinating because right before we, uh, we were recording today, I was on a coaching call with one of my clients and she's struggling and she was telling me she's struggling with her routines and managing her business. And I say, yes, because you disconnect that from doing the basics. Right. You got to go back to mastering the basics and what is working, because when you do that, everything else will flow. By everything product. Else it's yes. a byproduct of that that basic that routine that morning routine that self-care yes yeah and when you do um first thing in the morning oh, turn on your phone technology and look at emails and worse social media it does set that tone for that negative energy that vibe of anticipation and always checking every 15 minutes you'll notice that energy sticks with you all day and yeah. plus you've given away your agenda because you're now trying to solve other people's problems, other people's um, tasks for you because you didn't do, put yourself first. So it's really fascinating. It really. is. And and how, how simple, like it's so simple yet not always it's easy, right? Like, oh, I do get to put myself first. It really goes back to the worthiness. You got to mm -hmm. feel worthy of creating that space for you because you got to remember how you treat yourself is teaching how others will treat you. Right. So if you treat yourself like the last person in the world and undeserving and unworthy into pouring into you, well, how do you think that others will treat you? You just show them the example. Right. Yeah. Well put. Well put. Um, Petya, tell us, how can we connect with you? So my favorite place, it's really Instagram. It's just my name, Petya Kolobova. And I know you will put it in a show notes <laughs> because people will be like, P what? <laughs> so it's there or just my uh, free Facebook group for women, Unapologetically Abundant Woman. I do trainings, have a guest speakers. I love pouring into the women who are really here, who know they're meant for more. So those are my two favorite places where I love hanging out. Yes, yes. And of course, it will be um, on the show notes. And to wrap it up, I love to bring it back home. So help me do that, Petya. Um, it, it's not easy to, to form habits. It's not easy to put yourself first. But you said it, that it goes back to the belief. It goes back to you have to eradicate and reframe and change that belief so that it'll be easier to build those habits. It'll be easier to get the morning routine going. It'll be easier to do the basics. 
And so until then, you'll just start and then fall off. Start and fall off. And it's just that cycle. The only way to break it is to go deep sub and break the limiting beliefs on a subconscious level. And you do that with your clients. I do that with my clients for building habits. And so we are in the business of serving others and eradicating their limiting beliefs. Anything yes. you'd like to add? No, I, I absolutely love what do you stand for and what are you doing? So thank you so much for having me and thank you for the work you're creating in the world. It's so beautiful and so needed. You as well, Petia. Yeah, thank you for what you're doing. The many women that you have touched um, thus far and will continue to do so. It's been an honor to be in your presence. Thank you. Yes.